Well, are you interested in what I see as the number one thing that stops people from being able to get in the self-storage business today? My name's Mark Helm. I'm the author of Creating Wealth Through Self-Storage, and I'm the creator of the Self-Storage Quick Start Academy. And what I do is I support smaller investors who want to get in the self-storage business or smaller investors who want to grow their self-storage business, strategically do so in a way that creates true wealth and a fulfilling career. And here's what I see as the number one thing that stops people from getting in the self-storage business or even growing their self-storage portfolio today. And it's not some big, you know, fastly evolving dynamic aspect of the self-storage industry. Actually, what it is is fear. Fear is the number one thing I see as I work with people that blocks them from moving forward and either getting in the self-storage business or growing their self-storage business. So look, I know it can be scary. I know that moving into something new can generate fear. I get it, like right now as I'm filming this, we actually have a bid out on a portfolio, which for us is probably the largest number we've ever put out there. And you know, there's a part of me that's really excited and hopes that we get the deal. And then there's another part of me that would be that's scared that what if I made a mistake? What if I don't have my numbers right? You know, what will this mean to me if I screwed up and we actually get it? So I get the whole thing of fear, believe me. And anyone who has been in may anything that is expanding them and moving them up and especially moving into new areas outside the comfort zone, we all have that fear. But here's the thing, the main thing between what I see as successful people in any endeavor in life and the almost successful or even the never successful, the main difference is not that there isn't any fear, but that successful people are able to take action in spite of the fear. Look, I know all about the imposter syndrome, and I'm here to tell you it really doesn't matter how many facilities you have. At some point, you will feel like you're an imposter, like you have bamboozled the banks, you, your investor, everyone, and you really don't know what you're doing, and you really get scared. And I'm here to tell you, it doesn't even matter how many facilities you have. That experience, that fear is there for everyone, and everyone will hit it at some point, I promise you. But the difference is the ability to recognize it as fear and to be able to take action steps anyway, even though you have the fear, to be able to take the next step. Here's what I know from working with a lot of people over a long period of time and getting training for myself is that fear never, never goes away. It just doesn't go away. But it doesn't have to show up like an all-consuming thought that totally dictates what's possible for you. With the right training and the ability to relate to it in such a way, it'll begin to show up as like that annoying relative who shows up at a holiday event. You don't like them, but you know that they're going to be there and you got to deal with them and you do so and you're not that invested in them and you're very glad when they're gone. The, you know, that relative will eventually fear begins to show up for the people that I have mentored after. Fear begins to show up like that. Like you know they're going to be there and you'll be glad when they're gone and you know how to deal with them. So here's the thing, fear is just a thought. And what I've noticed is the successful mentors that I have modeled after in life, they have some practices that they do that helps them, one, 
reduce the amount of fear that happens and to be able to deal with it effectively when it comes up. So I want to take these next couple of episodes and share with you the practices I've seen the mentors and the highly successful people who deal with fear very effectively what they do to deal with it and I want to share those five practices with you. I'm also curious any practices that you all may have that you would share with me and with each other out there because we all deal with it and it doesn't matter how sophisticated you are you will still be dealing with fear as you step into unknown areas as you grow and get in your self storage business. What my hope for you is that the fear when it shows up it doesn't stop you. You, It's it's like people will have to make one more phone call to the bank to make sure that they know what the rate is or they have to understand this about the market before they can write their offer and if they could know exactly why this one competing property is offering half off on the first month if I know why that then maybe I'll understand it a little bit better and then I can write the offer or I'm not exactly sure about the numbers you know whether it's really going to grow at three percent a year if my income will so what number I should put in those type of conversations fear drives most of those conversations and what my wish for us is that we don't have fear stop us from taking the next step because what will happen is the property will be gone we will say something like oh well i guess it was meant to be maybe i'll get the next one and what happens is over a period of time you don't get anything then you move on to the next exciting type of opportunity that's out there and you remember you almost got in the storage business well what i want to do is give you some tools that will help you deal with the fear so that you can take the next action step that there is to take as you get in or grow your self storage business so let me share with you the five practices i've seen that the people that i respect respect and like and model myself after here are the five practices I've seen them do and share with me that makes a huge difference so the first one is feed and strengthen your mind daily now I'm going to say something here it is your thinking and it is your thoughts that determine what's possible in your life Now just think about that a minute. It's your thinking and it's your thoughts that determine what's possible for you in your life. What's possible in your self storage business or what's possible, can you get in the self storage business? Now I know the first reaction is like mine when I hear that, it's like, yeah, I know that. Of course I know that, yawn. What, What do you really have to tell me? But really get that, it is your thinking and your thoughts that determine what's possible. So what are you thinking about and what are your thoughts the majority of the time? See most of us don't relate to fear like it's a thought but that's all fear is is a thought fear does not exist what you're afraid of for the most part does not exist in reality it is a thought and fear literally is a byproduct of our evolution as a species fear is nothing more than a synaptic connection that happens in the brain in an instant that's either generated a by a thought or B by some sensory input. It's a synaptic connection that generates a chemical response in the brain, in the body, that causes the physical body to either fight or flee. And it is fear, it is that ability to fight or flee that allowed our species to survive hundreds of thousands of years ago in a very unfriendly environment. It kept our species alive. 
But as our species has evolved and we now have mastery over our environment, the number of times for most of us in our life where we are physically in danger and that fear saves us physically, for most of us, we can count it on one hand, the number of times we've ever had real physical danger in our lives. But yet, the same chemical response is there, and any time we have a fearful thought, the same process happens in our body. In fact, stress is nothing more than the residue of that chemical reaction lingering in our body. It's toxic, and it can kill us eventually. So being able to control the thoughts in the mind, the thoughts in your thinking is critical in being able to effectively deal with life and to be able especially effectively a deal with your thoughts as you move into new areas and expand your comfort zone in life. You know, fear still creates the same chemical reaction in us today that it did in our ancestors hundreds of thousands of years ago. It's just that in today's world, the majority of times that chemical process occurs, it's not something that's supporting us. It's actually something that's hurting us. Now, I know this might sound silly, but it's really not. If the thoughts and what you focus on the majority of the time are fear thoughts, negative thoughts, what's wrong, what could go wrong, what happens is your mind becomes a fertile environment for negative thoughts to live and, stay and have a long shelf life in your awareness and what happens is that long shelf life is what prohibits us from taking action. So what I've noticed is the highly successful people guard their thoughts like a hawk. So for example, they don't listen to news very often. Instead of listening to news, listen to podcasts, listen to uplifting and thought-provoking things rather than negative news. I'm telling you, it's never been easier today to control how you get the news. You can, we've actually got it set up or that I know the news that's important to me to get. I have the sources I get it from. It shows up in my inbox and I don't have to constantly read the newspaper and watch the news, especially the local news. It is toxic. I don't need to know how many murders are happening in my city. I can get that in a very different way than constant bombardment of negative news. That all has an effect on the thoughts that we think. If you're religious or spiritually inclined, every day set aside time that you read spiritual and uplifting material. In a lot of these episodes, we've talked about the morning routine. You know, set aside time every day that you're putting positive, uplifting thinking thoughts into your brain and then guard the rest of the day what comes in. The quality of your life at any given moment is determined by the thoughts you're thinking at that particular moment. Have your mind become your ally rather than something that stops you in life. You know, positive thinking creates a chemical reaction just like negative thinking does. And the more habitual positive thinking becomes, the better the environment, mental environment, we will create for ourselves. And that is the environment in which your self-storage business is going to grow or not grow. Always have positive input coming in, be reading books that uplift you, have a routine daily where you're taking time out to feed positive uplifting thoughts into your mind and guard what comes into your mind like a hawk. That's what I've noticed that highly successful people do. That's what the men my mentors have taught me to do. Try an experiment. Try going five days, you know, one work week without reading the newspaper or watching the news or listening to it on the radio. Here's what you'll notice is that you will 
your life will go on, your business will go on, and the world will go on without you knowing about all of the intricate details and all the negative stuff that's going on out there. You will, it will just move on. But the difference will be your thinking during that week. Give it a try. Here's what I know is your thinking, your thoughts, that is the most important asset you have. Now, the next practice I've seen that highly successful people and people who are able to not let fear stop them, the next practice I've seen is that they feed and strengthen their body daily as well. Now, I'll be the first to tell you of all the practices, this is probably the one that I'm the least consistent in, and in many ways should be the easiest practice to be consistent in. Look, we all know that eating right and exercising makes a huge difference for us, but yet we don't prioritize it like we do other aspects of our business. I can remember 30 years ago about in my career when I was working with one of my first business coaches. That time I had just, I was running a brokerage company, my first real estate company that I was in charge of. And I can remember that I was whining about the fact we had grown and I'd hired some more staff and I had to, at that point, we were in a negative cash flow and I had to continually feed the company to keep it going. Or how it occurred to me is I had to let an employee go and that and then do more work myself which would take me away from the brokerage which was the how I was generating the money to feed the company and I was suffering financially personally but I was keeping the company going and I explained all this in detail to this coach this mentor and he, they listened very patiently and after about five minutes I stopped and they looked at me and he said are you exercising and I felt like screaming at him at the top of my lungs. I mean, did you hear what I said? I'm talking about my financial survival. Why are you asking me about exercise? And, but I didn't. I just quietly took a deep breath and said, not really. And now I really get the power of that. I get the power of that question because here's what I know and here's what you know, regular, consistent, exercise allows you to think better allows you to focus better and allows it creates a much more focus and improves the critical thinking not only do you feel better not only are you more healthy it really improves the cognitive ability of your brain to function so here's my commitment from putting this episode together is that I am going to focus, I'm going to get a, either a yoga coach or a physical training coach slash accountability partner because I know that ex regular exercise would make a huge makes a huge difference for me but yet I'm not prioritizing it so for me that's what I will do to get that habit back of daily feeding and strengthening the body so those are the first two practices that I have seen successful people who really have mastered the ability to not let fear stop them. That's what they have told me and that's what I've noticed from their actions that they continually do. I have three more that I think you'll be surprised about that I'm gonna share next week. But I'm real curious, what are the practices that you have, that you've taken, that have helped you take action even when fear is involved? I'm very interested to know what they are. Share them below so that other people in the community can read them and let me know what you do to take action, especially in your self-storage business, in spite of having the fear pop up.
So thank you very much. My name is Mark Helm. I'm the author of Creating Wealth Through Self Storage and I'm the creator of the Storage World Analyzer. Go to storageworldanalyzer.com, find out more about version two of this program. This is a killer program that does financial analysis for, for the self storage industry. To my knowledge, it's the only cloud-based financial analysis software that's focused only for the self-storage industry. Find out more about it. See if it will support you. If you're waiting for information on the version 2, you will be receiving emails this week in the next seven days on it. So thank you very much. I'll see you next week.